So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we've had a lot of great programs and this is another one. So today it's Generating Subscription Revenue with Paywalls with Pete Erickson. Um, if you haven't noticed, we have rebranded. Um, and we love our little hashtag where the conversation happens because we do try to generate conversation and discussion because that's how we all learn from each other and share information. We have a bunch of new, there's even more than this, um, programs coming up. So keep an eye out on your email and social because we'd love for you to join us for those as well. If you have not renewed your membership or if you are not a member, please join us. We are great. We have cookies. That's just, that's what it is. Um, we have our Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, we have all our programs up on there. So if you've missed one and want to see it, go on over, take a look at all our social, see all our programs coming up, all the fun stuff we're doing. And a special thank you to all of our sponsors. Um, our sponsors, our members, all of you attendees are the reason that we're here and we're able to do all this. So we really appreciate your support. If you happen to know someone or you are someone from one of these companies, then thank you, um, we very much appreciate it. Again, just keep up to date, visit our website. Everything new is gonna be right on our website as soon as possible. And this is where I start <coughs> and I pass it over to Lisa. So let's dive in. Thanks, Jess. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, I wanna again, thank our sponsors, thank our members. We couldn't do this without you. I want to thank all of the members of the board and the programming committee for all of your support. And I am happy to announce um, and introduce today Pete Erickson, the founder <coughs> and CEO of Zine 101, which is <coughs> the leaky paywall subscription platform. He has worked with hundreds of news and magazine publishers, helping them with their digital subscription strategies. He is all about helping publishers build their email lists, paid subscriptions, and create new content products. Pete, it's great to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am gonna turn this over to you. I am gonna mute myself and I, we can't wait to learn from you. So thank you. Thanks, Lisa, appreciate it. All right, I get to share my screen now, I think. Let's uh, share my desktop. Right. Hit the present button. Okay, come on, present. All right, Chrome is being finicky, hang tight. Let's see if I can reboot this. How come you have green trees, Pete? Where's the snow? <laughs> <laughs> if I shared my other screen, there's the snows on the other one. It's just, you know, looking forward to spring, that's all. All right, let's... There we go. All right. Is that working for you guys? Looks good. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Let's, let's roll. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do today is cover three areas. One is uh, what are the current challenges with digital subscriptions, especially for print publishers? Um, then I'd like to jump into a couple of uh, uh, stories that we went through, that I went through personally with a couple of pu uh, publishers and how that panned out. And then the third uh, part of this, I want to I want to jump in and and uh, give you a framework, really a tactical framework that you could put to work uh, today or Monday uh, for your uh, publication that uh, that works like gangbusters. And the idea is building uh, your email list uh, and building paid subscriptions. Um, that's what we're going to focus on. Okay. So the first challenge uh, might seem fundamental, but it's something to always think about, and that's um, your articles have to be friendly to um, Google so that they can be found in search, and they have to be shareable in social media. And you, you've probably heard this before, but it's, it's, it's critical, and I can't tell you how many publishers I've run into that are um, still, and maybe you're one of them, not publishing your best premium content on the web. And of course, a paywall is the next step uh, if you're going in that direction. Um, 
if you look at these, this, these blue numbers, um, just wanna show you how important it is. This is one of the publishers we work with. And we take a look at where are their paid subscriptions coming from? And it, it varies some, but Google search, organic search 404, this is a, for a specific uh, time period. Um, their email marketing campaigns, uh, a big one, we're gonna talk about that. Um, direct, that's someone who goes directly to the website social media, and then referrals from other websites. Now, these numbers can change. For some of our news publishers, we have Facebook as the number one source of paid uh, digital subscriptions. Um, but in any case, the point is that um, PDFs and flipbooks, um, they do serve a purpose for a certain segment of reader, but they don't, they don't serve the modern reader, especially when you get on mobile. All right, the second challenge is related to this. It's, it's really the format. And I see a lot of PDFs and flipbooks that are, um, and, and I, I get what the benefits are. They're easy to produce, um, uh, but they're, they're applied in a way that's not gonna uh, generate uh, new subscribers the way you really want them to. Um, essentially, when you put content in a PDF or in a flipbook, it's locked content from the modern reader. Google cannot, Okay, Google has a hard time indexing PDFs um, and flipbooks. Um, it, it, they, never, they never do well in search. So, I mean, when's the last time you found a PDF when you search for something? It doesn't happen very often. The other thing I see sometimes is where I'll go to a publisher's website <clears throat> and I'll click on the flipbook and it'll take me off site to a third party vendor, right? And that's a problem in itself because you're, you're literally sending people away from your website, you might lose them forever. They may come back, maybe they'll subscribe to Flipbook Access, but the numbers are very low. Um, the other thing that drives me totally bananas is when I see Flipbooks that are free on uh, a website, just free and open. And that publisher is trying to um, generate paid print and digital subscriptions. Uh, and it's like a big sieve, you know, why would I pay for a subscription when I can just you know, take a look through the flipbook if, if I really, really wanted to. And then the last thing is, is what I mentioned before is mobile. Um, the numbers are, are, are a little different, but 70% is a pretty, pretty typical number of, of your traffic that is going to your website, looking at your content. So you really have to look at your, the articles that you produce. Are they friendly? Do they look good on our phone? You know, P, a PDF and a flipbook, it just doesn't work. No matter what you do, no matter how you try is too much work trying to pinch and zoom and flip and 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 figure out how to how to manage the the, the flip books okay hey pete uh, yeah real quick do you want to launch that poll sure yeah why not I about it earlier <laughs> oh yeah that's fine okay yeah um, i don't know how do i do i do that or do you do that um i'll do it i'll hit the button but we okay. are going to launch a poll so everyone should get something popping up on their screen and we would appreciate you taking part. Cool. There we go. Okay. Back here. Okay. Let's talk about Modern Drummer Magazine. Um, so about five years ago, uh, we work with them to create a digital subscription plan for them. That was the original intent and purpose. And the situation uh, that they were in was, was pretty typical of a lot of publishers at the time and still some publishers today, where their website traffic uh, was driven by their news blogs. So they were publishing sort of in between articles and news. Uh, they had a strong podcast going. Uh, they had a lot of educational, you know, how-to articles how, uh, in terms of how-to uh, drumming, um, but very little actual magazine content. So the the articles that people really wanted to read uh, were just not available on the site. And that, um, you know, they had a pretty, pretty good amount of website traffic at the time, but they really were missing a giant opportunity. Um, so <clears throat> what they were currently trying to sell is uh, print subscriptions, mostly uh, PDF subscriptions, uh, which um, were very few, just a handful a week. It was just, it just didn't, it really didn't work uh, very well. They had an e-store for, for uh, uh, you know, back issues and such, which, which makes sense. Um, they were selling education and they were promoting lots, lots of events, but the digital subscription funnel was, was almost uh, non-existent. 
So in 2017, we helped them launch their new uh, website. And the purpose was to do two things. One is to drive more uh, website traffic through Google search and social sharing uh, to, to the site and to get all their magazine articles on the site in a, in a web format. So basically, you know, like you go to any news site, you click on an article, uh, if you're just reading an article, it's good on mobile. Um, and so what they did, or what they did at the time is they actually copied and pasted the text and images from their PDFs uh, into, uh, onto their website. And they went back a year and did that uh, um, in a, um, and they used to, they used actually one of our uh, free plugins called Issue M, which uh, lets uh, publishers publish web-based issues that are Google and social friendly. And uh, it's free on the WordPress repository. You can grab it. Uh, and, um, uh, and then what they also did is um, as they were publishing, uh, releasing issues going forward, is they would go back every single month. And then what they would do is they would, um, they would copy and paste articles into back issues as well. So every, every new issue they released in a web format they actually released uh, uh, an archive issue in a web format. And the reason that you do that is because every article that you publish in a proper web format is a magnet for a specific uh, Google search and uh, uh, gets shared in social media. Okay. And then of course, uh, we helped them install a, a metered paywall. It was our leaky paywall product um, at the time. And what is a metered paywall? Well, a metered paywall is essentially a paywall that's a little leaky um, that lets you choose to, let's say, uh, give away one, two, three free articles per month before that visitor sees the prompt to subscribe. And the metered paywall lets Google continue to what we call indexing. It lets Google crawl all your articles and it lets all your articles rank in Google search. And it also lets, continues to let all your articles get shared on Facebook and LinkedIn uh, and on social media and, uh, and be shared by thousands. And they can read the full article when they click the link, but it's only when the individual browser starts to browse where the meter kicks in and counts how many free articles they're gonna get before they're, they're prompted to subscribe. So that's, that's what happened there. Okay, so now that they have their website in a Google friendly, you know, their articles essentially in a Google friendly social sharing format and the meter paywall up, what happened? Um, the first 14 days, they had 900 new subscribers come on board. Um, it was, they were pretty happy with that. Um, it didn't take them that long to get into a situation where every day they were in the double digits of subscriptions. And, and that was a mix of, of both digital and print subscriptions. Um, if you look at this little chart over here, this is um, this is from archive.org, which is also known as the Wayback Machine. <laughs> if you ever heard of the Wayback Machine, <laughs> you need to go there and put in your, your web address and take a look as far back as you can to the first version of the website that you ever published and have a really good laugh. Because <laughs> the, it, the ar ar archive.org basically preserves the history of the internet. It's an amazing place. But if you look at, and, and this is public uh, traffic data, and if you look at the data, you'll see that um, you know, since they, they started putting their articles in a web-based format and, and really piling those, those archives in, in a, in a web-based Google-friendly format, their traffic grew uh, uh, through search and social media. And um, it, it was a pretty, pretty dramatic uh, uh, story. So um, their print subscriptions grew too. Um, now, so, so why did that happen? So, when you set up your website as a, what I would call like a proper digital engine. So you're pulling in all this traffic from, from Google search and social sharing, and you have a metered paywall in place that is, that is capturing, let's say free registrations, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, um, and paid subscriptions. You, you create this, this, this uh, relationship engine um, where you're presenting your, your paid message over and over again. And when you're presenting your paid message, you're, you're obviously giving the, the um, the reader a choice. Do you want a digital only subscription? Do you want a print and digital subscription? And what they did, uh, which, which worked for years, which was really interesting is, is how they priced print versus digital. Their print and digital subscription was, was at the time was $29 per year. 
their digital only subscription was 60 or $59 per year. So they, they priced their digital subscription higher than their print subscription. And now for them, ad revenue in print was, was really the goal. They wanted to motivate print and it worked. But what was really interesting is that 20% of people that subscribed chose the digital only product, which kind of blew all our minds. Uh, but there are people out there that just don't want paper, but they're willing to pay for digital. Um, now, I wouldn't, they're no longer doing that. I'm not sure I would do that today because today there's a real focus on simplicity and not confusing the buyer. Um, and I'll, I'll show you later, um, you probably wanna keep pricing the same for, for those choices. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. All right, so here's another, another story, kind of a similar uh, story. We work with Track and Field News, um, veteran uh, news magazine publisher, news publisher, 50 plus years of archives. Um, they, uh, they wanted to generate uh, digital subscriptions. That was their primary, uh, primary uh, push. And what was shocking was in the middle of the project that we were in, um, they announced to us, and we were, we were helping at the time, we were helping them put together their, their new website and paywall, um, uh, and, and it was a, a good sized project. <laughs> they announced that they were gonna quit printing. And that was a little bit of a shocker. Um, it lasted for nine months and then went back to, to printing again. And so what we all found out was that 50% um, of their uh, readership had absolutely no interest in logging into anything. They wanted the print product. Um, that was, they were willing to pay for it. And, and that was that. And they were, they were really good. They were very, you know, real emotional tugs in their, you know, uh, postcard uh, and print campaigns to get uh, people to log into their new state-of-the-art, you know, <laughs> publication. Uh, and half, half their readership said, no, I'm not interested. Um, so what they did uh, when they went back to print is they went from the $30 a year uh, uh, product for print to, if you look at their website now, uh, they're charging over $150 per year. So they, they just crank their prices up. Um, they have a few different products that they're selling. Um, their, their, their highest uh, level product um, includes access to all their archives. So they have a lot of archives and, and they installed a time wall. And so what's a time wall? Well, time wall is, is, uh, uh, can be good for publishers that have a lot of ever, old evergreen content um, that's, that has value. And you can charge, uh, you know, it's a lot of work to preserve all this content, uh, you can charge for that. Uh, so their highest uh, paid product includes full archive access. And, you know, they're, so Track and Field News, they're, they're publishing uh, a database of um, sort of the recorded history of track and field events. And that, that's, uh, and, and the, the, their fans, their readership, they, they, they wanna get back to, to all the old record, all the times and all the charts. They have tons of charts on there uh, uh, from, uh, uh, you know, from decades ago. Uh, so that, that works really well for them. And I, you know, I, I take a look at their subscriptions once in a while and, and, and you know, what's been happening is, and this has been several years now, is, is, is digital print and these, time, these archive time wall subscriptions they're just rolling in. They're, they're, you know, it's working really, really well for them. Now, one thing that I want to mention, and and this is a workflow um, uh, thing that that they're doing, which I think uh, is brilliant and works really well for them, is, and I know one of the challenges for 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 issue based publishers is, you know, you're producing a print issue, it's the print uh, model first, and then it goes on the website. And there's a with, in the digital world that that's actually problematic. You have to get your articles on the web right away. Um, if something's ready to go, um, you're, you're losing out in Google search, in fresh, you know, fresh, a fresh article, whether it's news or a magazine, a long form article, you're losing out in social sharing, stuff that you can get right away um, that uh, your audience is willing to pay for. Um, if they can get something earlier, uh, that wins. So, but you still have this sort of workflow uh, challenge because it's issue-based, it's a print and issue-based uh, uh, product. So what Track and Field does, if you look, this is actually their homepage. And what they do is they, um, when, when something's ready to go, 
they publish it on their homepage and they actually make a copy of it and they put it into a draft web issue um, until that issue is ready to go. And then they launch the issue. And it's almost, and it's, some people say, hey, that's duplicate content. No, it's not. Google doesn't care about duplicate content. Google only ranks the first article that's, um, that's published. That's a myth that's been around for decades. Um, uh, and, and so it, what they're doing is they're serving uh, their print audience that really does like to uh, read things in a issue-based format, but they're also serving the, the, the audience that just wants the, you know, want the, they want the articles now. Okay. Um, let's keep going. Okay, so this is the third part of this. So what I'm gonna show you here is uh, a framework that works really well for, for building your email list and, um, and convert, converting paid subscribers. So let's take a look at um, this, this framework. And it falls in line with what I've been talking about. You, your website, <clears throat> when you turn on subscriptions, you will generally capture your hardcore fans. They'll pay you right up front pretty quickly early on. But, the, but they're a very, very small percentage of the actual traffic that comes to your website. The 99% the, the of your traffic are casual visitors, people that find you from searching in Google or get a share in social. They might really not be interested in your publication and they might be fairly interested in, in your publication, but they're casuals, they're not ready to pay. But they're your biggest opportunity. Biggest body, biggest opportunity. So how do you convert a casual visitor that's coming in from a Google search into a paid subscriber up here, number three? And the secret is, that I alluded to is you're, you're uh, capturing their email address um, and sending them your newsletter. So the, the advantage of setting up a paywall um, in a way to force essentially, um, and, and sort of, it's sort of carrot and stick, you're, you're giving them some limited access in return for an email address. And um, that gets them on your newsletter, which then, becomes number two, oops, yeah, and uh, becomes your direct marketing tool. So building your email list up front, this is, the, this is the most important thing you can do. If you walk away from this session with just one thing on your agenda, this is it. Make sure you set up a free registration. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second. Um, <clears throat> and you'll start there because when, when somebody registers on your website, through your paywall as a free registered user, user <clears throat> with limited access, you're, you're essentially starting the relationship with that person. And the, and the data is clear. If you, the longer somebody uh, you know, gets your newsletter, your newsletter lands in their inbox, they click the article link, they go back to the website and, and or they wanna read the article, maybe they get a couple of months and then they get the prompt to pay because they've used up their free allotment. That, um, the longer they stay on your newsletter, the higher chance they have of subscribing. Okay, so this is the framework. And new products, you know, once you get this framework uh, flowing uh, and it works really well, you'll then, then it's time to start thinking about how do, you, how do you tweak it? How do you add new products? There are lots of things you can do to, to accelerate that. And if we have a little time, we can kind of jump into that. Um, okay, so here is um, Small Boats Magazine. Um, if you go to smallboatsmonthly.com, check this publication out. Um, before I forget, just start reading some articles, register for their free level, get on their newsletter and pay close attention to how they promote paid subscriptions because it, 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 it is just, it's awesome. It works so well. Um, and the way they have it set up is their meter, um, now they've been doing this for a while. So they're, they're pretty restrictive about their content. Um, typically when publishers launch paywalls, they tend to be generous about their content. You might give away, you know, two, three, four articles or register and you'll get five a month or three a month or something like that. What, what Small Boats does now is uh, the meter is set to one free article. And that's all you need for Google to be able to index your entire site. One free article. And then once you read that free article, you have to register. And then you'll get another free article. And that's it. So um, here we are, this is uh, the homepage. Let's pretend I've used up my free article. I'm gonna click this Swamp Creek article here. And it takes me to the, the subscription message. So 
here I am, I'm in the article up here and I get this message right in content. And my, me as a reader, like I wanna read this article. Like I'm getting, I'm getting this message at just the time I wanna read the article because I, I clicked on it. And that's another benefit of the meter is the, you're not choosing which articles to restrict. That's a lot of work and you're gonna get it wrong every time. The meter lets the, the incoming visitor choose what article they wanna read. And that's how you get their attention. And that's how you start that relationship. So, um, so this is the subscription uh, message. And the pitch is very, very simple. Read this article for free. This works every time. Well, not every time, but it works a lot of times. Um, and so, OK, so I sign up here, no credit card required to finish reading the article. Pretty, pretty simple proposition. And even though Small Boats is only giving away this one article. I mean, they have long, beautiful long form content. Um, it works. I, I look at the, I look at the subscriptions coming in and the mix of, uh, you know, uh, free and, and paid subscriptions is strong. Um, so now I, I click this, um, this, uh, Hey, read my free article and I get a simple registration form. Um, and you can, you know, you can, you can sort of use the sort of standard approach where you, the idea of course is to grab the email address. Um, you can also set it up so it's just an email and it sort of auto generates uh, their account on the fly. But the idea is they fill this out, this works, and then they get taken back to the article they were reading. And the article is unlocked for them. Um, they can read it. Uh, the email is captured. It's sent off to your you know, MailChimp or your, your whatever email uh, service provider uh, you're using, which means that now you have someone who is, who is uh, subscribed to your newsletter in a, in a sort of a more of a relationship uh, uh, way. And, and that works, um, like I said, it works great. And so the results, they started the, uh, so Small Boat started this registration last summer um, and they saw about 20% uptick in, um, in their email list growth and their uh, paid subscription growth, just, just from uh, setting up the uh, free registration uh, framework. Okay, um, let's dig into the newsletter a little bit. It's really important. Um, your newsletter is your number one direct marketing tool. Your la it's landing in people's inboxes. It's sending people back to articles that they wanna read. Um, and so this, this is my Gmail account. This is one of their newsletters that, that comes in um, as, a, as a, uh, a magazine publisher. You know, their articles are longer, they don't have that much volume for, for content. Um, they actually will, uh, they do a really good job of pulling archive articles like they might send, because they, they email out about twice a week. And one of those is usually an archive article uh, newsletter. So they'll send a couple of uh, related, like two articles that are related. Maybe it's the same boat style, or I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it, it, it works. And uh, with beautiful pictures, very compelling. And nobody reads all your content uh, you know, in your magazine or on your website. So people read it, they click, click back to it. Um, so this newsletter now is, you know, you have email address, right? You're, you're growing your list. You're sending uh, people back to your website. They're, you know, they're clicking the, they're clicking the title, they're, they're clicking uh, back to your site um, and they're using up their free registration benefit. Whatever you decide, that free registration gives that person access to, they're using it up. And what they're seeing after they use it up is the, is the upgrade message or the, the paid subscription message. So if I click this and let's say I've used up, um, oh, I inserted a slide at the, at the last moment. Let me back up a second. Same newsletter. I just scroll down a bit. This is something that, that um, I think is very elegant and we know, we know it works. Uh, is always have your so your paid subscriptions being promoted. So with the free registration, you, you'll probably send, uh, you'll probably organize that email, that free registered user uh, by tag, like MailChimp does it through tagging. So you, somebody registers on your website for free, uh, they get added to your MailChimp list, and then the tag free goes to MailChimp. And now you know who's, who's uh, free. Well, you can, now you can target those free registered um, uh, 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 subscribers with the newsletter that promotes your paid subscription. So if you look here, you know, the, the articles are at, up at the top. And then here you have the join the small boats community and you'll get all these benefits, right? 
And then also really important, use a big button just like they do to, to join. You know, links are fine, but buttons boost clicks big time. So create a nice big button to join or to subscribe or whatever, whatever the benefit message is to, to pay. Um, their, their sponsors are down below, which is a nice elegant way to handle that. And I just thought it, it's so good. I just thought I'd, I, have, I had to share that. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now I, <clears throat> I've used up my free articles and I go to the next article. And again, I'm stopped in the next article that I wanna read that I'm choosing and it says to upgrade your account. So um, I've used up my, my, free, uh, my two free articles uh, in this case and it's telling me to upgrade. Okay. Um, they have a very effective and, um, uh, and compelling uh, conversion because they're selling one product. And this is something that we're seeing happen a lot now with publishers. Um, it's really, especially as a print publisher, you have print, print product, you have a print digital product, um, you have some complexity in what you're selling, but see if you can boil down your what you're actually selling to one thing. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it works because a confused customer, a confused visitor doesn't, you know, buy. If I have to do math, you know, to figure out which subscription plan I want to sign up for, you gonna you might lose me, right? Um, Netflix, you know, they have monthly recurring. That's it. No annual subscriptions. You go to the New York Times, uh, you um, uh, you use up their uh, free allotment, their registration uh, that they have. Um, you get you get one choice. Sometimes they serve you two choices, but they're, they're always testing, but um, often you'll just get one choice. It's some promotion. It's one thing. That's it. You don't have to do any math. I don't have to make any choices. It's just this one thing. And when you, when you actually get the free registration going, what, you, um, what you're doing is you're building that relationship over time. So they're, they're seeing your product. I mean, if you were to give away two free articles a month, they're gonna get some benefit out of that. They're gonna see your content. They're gonna start trusting your content, liking your content. And this is the casual visitor. And, and they're gonna see that upgrade message over time. And if the message just has one path, in other words, just one click, like right here, subscribe now. Um, I know what the price is, then the chance, the conversion chances go up. Okay. So uh, the other thing too is, <laughs> if you have one plan is one registration so you go you don't have to sell anything else you're these you're when they're when they're at, when the free registered uh you know subscriber is here they're 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 ready to buy so just take them to the to the checkout page and uh one of the hidden benefits of a free registration is they've already entered most of their you know like their name their email their password like they're all logged in they're they're ready to go it's just it's really a credit card um it's print then there's an address but um, it's a much simpler checkout and you want to reduce the amount of clicks and decisions that, that someone has to be making in this uh, checkout uh, process. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is interesting too. So this is for the, I, what I described as the free registration flow, which, which is great. But what about for the casual visitor who comes to your website and says, hmm, boy, this looks really interesting. Hmm, I wonder what subscriptions like. And they click you know the subscribe uh, uh, button in the in, in the top. So they're 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 not a, a, a registered uh, subscriber that has a relationship with you. They're just casual. They're coming in from Facebook or Google search. Well, build a sales page for them. So if you go to Small Boats and you click that, you'll see that they have this nice sales page. It's in two parts. I think this is really well done. Just copy it. Um, subscribe to Small Boats. Nice welcome from the editor, right? And then. Single pricing, super easy to understand. Here are all the benefits you get. And then uh, they do something sneaky if you're paying attention is they, there's actually two choices here. It's kind of one psychological choice because it's a subscription, but do I subscribe for me or do I subscribe for someone else? Easy choice, right? And that works really well. And, it, and if you listen to Greg Wolf, he'll tell you that 20% of your paid subscriptions should be if, if you have a giftable publication should be, uh, should be gifts, 20% of your subscriptions should be gift subscriptions. All right, Greg. <laughs> okay, uh, so next. Okay, let's talk about print and digital access. So this is the New Yorker. Um, I think this is, a, this is a very fair approach. This is a good approach. It's simple, it's not confusing. Um, if you're gonna offer a print digital product and you're gonna offer a uh, digital only product, 
then the choice of, this is well presented, it's a choice of two. The key here is to keep your pricing the same. So you're not making people do math. So it's, hey, it's 16 weeks for 12 bucks, 16 weeks for 12 bucks. Oh, what's my decision point? My decision point is, do I want print and digital or do I want digital only? Okay, that's a pretty easy decision. Most people know what they're interested in as far as print versus digital only. And, and off you go. So keep it, keep it simple. I talked to a publisher, a print publisher recently who was actually going to uh, have one plan. It was an annual recurring, which I think is great. Um, and then they're gonna have an opt out of print. So one plan, one promotion, simple, clean. And then you, the, giving the user to simply check a box that says you know, that they don't want the print uh, product, which might, I know you guys might go run, you know, go screaming, running, but that's, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with people that have very clear, um, you know, some people just want digital and, and don't want paper. And some people absolutely demand paper, um, just offering choices. Okay, uh, let's see where we're at. We're at the end. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to wrap it all up, get your, make sure your articles are web-based. Uh, PDFs and flipbooks are great. Put them on your website, lock them down with your paywall for paid subscribers only, but your, all your traffic from Google and social sharing is, gonna, is going to uh, land on these regular web-based mobile-friendly articles. Get a metered paywall set up so that yeah, Google uh, can continue to rank all your articles and, and all, all your articles can be shared in social media. Set up a free registration to capture email addresses. Um, give people a little extra content for registering. Make your newsletter super uh, compelling and you, you will enjoy more paid subscribers, both print and digital. And that's it. Thank you so much, Pete. How'd I do on time? Okay, not too bad. You did great. Okay, cool. Um, so we had one question about the time wall versus a paywall. Yeah. Um, we have one person who answered. Do you want to give an opinion or your your definition of the difference? Mm -hmm. Sure. A paywall is essentially um, you're saying pay for content, generally all your content. Um, a time wall is segmenting your old content versus your, your fresh content. And so if you're, it's, it's really just one layer of complexity inside a paywall. So with Leaky Paywall, which we, we produce, um, you can set up, um, okay, very simple, two articles for free, and then you have to pay or register. Um, and uh, somebody joins for free or somebody pays for uh, just let's say current issue content or current article content, we might set up, uh, say, look, anything that's over 90 days old or ever over a year old is considered archive or premium plus content. So the time wall then restricts that and says, okay, if you want access to all our, all our content that's one year or older, um, you pay more for that. Um, so that's, it's just a, um, it's, it's really kind of a feature of a paywall is what it is. Got it. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, so just for me, I was blown away with what you were talking about with Modern Drummer and that, that scenario where, you know, the, the, the digital price was so high. Yeah. I was just fascinated by that. And it just, can you talk a little bit about that? Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Um, we had a lot of conversation about, about revenue uh, up front, and, you know, clearly the, their ad revenue was just their, their driving force. And so they, they, they wanted to make sure that their digital revenues could carry some weight uh, because ad, because ad revenues uh, in digital are a fraction of, and I don't know what the exact number is. I don't know if it's 10%, it's, it, but it is, it, it's a small percentage of, uh, of that. And so, so they ran that, uh, that price difference for at least three years, I'd say something like that. And, and people, people paid for it. Um, you know, I tell the story sometimes of, of, of I subscribe to our local newspaper uh, when I first moved into our house in New Hampshire, and then we had two small kids, <laughs> and I had I had literally newspaper litter in my driveway. My wife would would tell me to go clean up the fourteen newspapers that were laying on the driveway, and we, so we switched to digital only. and 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 uh, uh, and our our local newspaper charges fifteen bucks a month, which is like we're in we're in a very rural place in New Hampshire, and they're getting fifteen bucks a month, you know, which is so. 
don't be afraid to charge up for digital. I, I still, in today's day and age though, people, we're so busy, we're so easily confused with offers. You have to figure out how to boil down your offer to ideally to one. If you have to make two offers, make them the same price. Don't let people, if you get somebody sitting and staring at a screen saying, okay, well, this one's 12 and this one's 24, or this one's, you know, 35, and maybe I should go for the annual and this and that. No, forget that, you know, just pick a number. Um, and uh, I get a lot of questions about pricing. You know, where do you start with pricing? Uh, we do deal with, with a bunch of startup publishers and what do they do? Um, well, you know, you, you got to start probably at a very reasonable number and then you can always raise your price. Um, so that, that's my, my general uh, philosophy on that. Amazing. Anybody have questions they want to ask? Pete, I'm still fascinated. I can go back on this for a while, but yeah. let's open it up. Come on, somebody has a question for me. Yeah, I have one, uh, Lisa. Um, can, can you talked about the, um, the archive and you talked about the time wall. Um, what, what are you seeing, seeing Pete as sort of best practices? If, if a publisher gets all of their, their, uh, issues into a digital archive mm -hmm. that, that they can sell, um, you know, separately, I guess that they can, is that a good idea? Should it be part of just the one thing where if they're a digital subscriber, they get the archive or, or can it be um, a good strategy to split that, that, that you only get the, the current issue or the current year with your subscription and then the 10 or 20 or 50 year archive is a different thing. That's a really good question. I'd say as a general rule, simplicity wins. So if you're going to, if you're going to sell access to a 50 year archive, then you sell absolutely annual only. Don't, do not make it monthly, charge up for it. Um, it kind of depends on the audience. If you think that if, 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 if the archive content truly is either a database like the Austin Monitor or, the, or like you're a newspaper and you're tracking all the, all the transactions in, in the city and, and uh, you know, all the real estate and commercial uh, rulings and, and you're, you're giving people an access to a database, they, they need to pay for that. Um, but as a general, you know, generally I'd say I would favor, um, uh, keeping things simple and just charging up for it as a general rule. Yeah. Uh, you can, the, okay. The other thing I have to say is throw stuff against the wall. Really. It's not hard to set up. This stuff is not, at least with, with our system, it's not hard to set up and you can try, you can, you can, you can, you, every month you could try something new if you wanted to, you know, try the time wall for, for, for six months or try for a year, see how it goes. Um, you know, and, uh, um, but uh, again, probably, probably deserves a little more conversation in terms of what the content is and who the audience is. Yeah. I also, think it also, um, oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I think it really helps because we had this, um, uh, question at my last company where, um, uh, you know, it came down to looking at Google analytics and looking at, um, how people are using your website. So if people are viewing archived content, then whether you make them pay for it or whether you make them register for it is sort of immaterial. But I, that's what I would say is, first of all, how valuable is your current content? So in other words, can you find it other places for free? Mm -hmm. um, and or, uh, you know, if that's bringing people in, you might want to keep that. But if they really value the archive content, that's where you would insert a wall, whether it's registration or paid. Yep. Yeah. The Google Analytics, that's a good call to absolutely look at that. Really good call. Yep. That'll guide you. And I was just going to ask Pete also, just as a follow-up, um, how do you position, how do you like to position or what are you seeing with your clients for, for the sort of uh, replica of the, of the magazine itself? Where does that fit in with the print magazine and the um, paywalled sort of web-based content? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I can show you an example. That might be the best way to do that. Um, what I would do at like Business Journal, this is a, uh, let me just, let me share my screen with you guys again. Can I do that? Yeah, go for it. Uh, okay, I'll share this. And all right, you guys see that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they, they're a print, print publisher. It's a Business Journal, uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Um, they have a, um, uh, the news flowing here. And then if you go into their archives and uh, hang on a second, I got to get rid of the zoom, zoom menu. Hang on a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to past issues here. 
Uh, so if you click into an issue, you, you see that there's a choice between flipbook and uh, and and the you know whatever it is. So if I click on the on the issue, um, you get web-based articles, right? So I can click into an article, and um, it loads up the web-based version, and I have a nice table of contents here, and that's all great. So um, the flipbook, um, like there's a link for a flipbook here. And if I go back in here and I click on the um, flipbook here, you you attach the flipbook to the to the issue and you restrict it, right? I don't know if they're if this is a sponsored issue or I don't know what they're doing right now, but what you can do is you basically restrict the replicas or the flipbooks to uh, pay, paid subscribers only. Um, so the, for those who actually want that, they have to pay for it. Uh, but you're metering the rest of the articles that are web-based. So you're offering two formats. Flipbook's good for desktop, really uh, is the best. Maybe maybe an iPad, um, not for phones. And then you have your web-based articles for of course all the mobile users um, and people who don't wanna deal with uh, Flipbooks. Um, and so as far as those, the paywall, um, you're, you're metering the content here, you're locking down the replicas here. But what you can do with, the nice thing of course about the replicas is they're fast to publish. So if I go here and I have 50 years of archives, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to copy and paste all those articles into all those archives. So you can just quickly go and load up all the flip books, all the replicas, um, restrict them. And then, you know, for a news publisher like this, it doesn't make sense to go back in time. But for, for a Evergreen Content Magazine publisher, absolutely makes sense to uh, go back in time. And, you know, I would say once a month you, you, uh, uh, along with that flip book, you start adding the web-based articles that then start attracting their own, their own search, and you can promote them as you know, flash from the past, or you know, get creative with your email uh, newsletter. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, just and is it is it something that's in? I guess I was more that that was great, but is it? it my, I was also trying to get out. Is it is it uh, valuable uh, to have? Mm -hmm. uh, a flip book to have a replica is that something that that fits into this um you know this whole model i i think if you're coming from print and you have a loyal audience uh that likes you know the the the, the replica format absolutely it's not that expensive um to produce these is very quick to publish doesn't cost hardly anything to to actually put them up, you just want to be careful. You want to restrict them so that's for paid subscribers only. So no, no, no flipbooks, and let the web-based articles be your magnets for Google and social uh, uh, sharing. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, we, we we've had this conversation so many times. Where what do we do with the flipbook? Okay, well, keep the flipbook. There's no there's no need, and and you can quickly populate all your back archives with the flipbook. That's great. Uh, but restrict the flipbook and then work on the web-based articles going forward and maybe backwards if it's evergreen content. Um, so what you know, one of the things that maybe I should clarify is, you know, I mentioned this plugin that we have on the WordPress repository called issue M. Well, it lets you assemble articles in this uh, in this uh, uh, what it does is it, it it's like takes your news items but just categorizes it in an issue. Right, and which allows you to like allows us to create a little table of contents for that for that um, issue, but it's all web, Google, social friendly, and then uh, you can attach, and that drives what the actual issue is, and then you can attach a flipbook or a PDF to that issue. Um, this is how we actually got started about eleven years ago. This is, we created this product, and this is how we got started in publishing it was with this web issue uh, product. Uh, and for print publishers, it's a nice fit because um, it gives you the ability to, you know, have web-based issues, attach flipbooks, restrict everything as you wish, um, you know, for to drive those paid paid subscriptions. So we have some great questions in the chat. Is it okay um, if I read them to you, or yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, of course. So Trevor has a question, and it's. Do you have an estimate of how many subscriptions um, are typically lost to paywall jumpers, clearing their cookies, et cetera, with a metered slash, you know, leaky paywall yeah. versus a hard paywall like the Wall Street Journal? Yes, yes. What a great question. Um, the answer is to, um, so 
some publishers don't mind that. It's like New York Times, you can get around the paywall. You go to Incognito and you read the article. They don't care. Um, there's, I don't know what their philosophy is on, on that, but they obviously let you do it. Um, some publishers say, no, we don't want that. You know, we, we, we need to lock down our content, especially like financial publishers. They're really, really on us for locking down content. They want their content to show up in search. They want their content to be socially shared, but at the same time, they, want to, they don't want people going incognito. So what do we do? We, 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 we block their or the software blocks their IP, the incoming IP address. So we track all the IPs coming in to, uh, and if, I, if I'm on my desktop and I switch to incognito, I still get the subscription message because, uh, because the IP is being tracked. It's not the browser, it's the IP. So for publishers that really want to harden their paywall, that's, we find that's a great way to do it. Our, the financial publishers that we, we work with, they tell us that their, their, their subscriptions jumped at least 10% just by doing that. Um, so. Got it. That's what we hear. So hopefully that's helpful. Rebecca, Mike, do you guys want to talk a little bit about Rebecca? Do you want to talk about your question or do you want me to read it? Um, here she comes. You can go ahead and read it. It's pretty clear, I think. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have, Rebecca says we have 3.2 million, uh, 3, 3 million monthly unique visitors, but page views and visitors is 1.5. While we time wall most of the two, most, the most two years of recent content, the current internal thinking is that with low view slash visitor, we wouldn't be able to monetize our content older than two years old, which is currently open access. Thoughts, um, medical, journal, medical journal content is what we do. So the, wait, there's 3 million visitors and 1.5 million page views? Or is that, or is it, the, is it reversed? Sorry, so 3.2 million monthly unique visitors, but then the page views is just 1.5, not 1.5 million. So a visitor would view 1.5 oh, oh, pages a oh, month. One, oh, sorry, got it. 1.5 page views, perfect. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Uh, one to two pages per visit. That I, I, that's that's industry wide. That that that's a very common number. So that really, um, so it, that argues for having like your free registration set at one, like the meter set to one free article. And then when you go to the second article, it's, you got to register to read that article. Um, you know, it sounds like the article is valuable information and somebody would be willing to register for it. And then once you, once they're on, you know, they're on your newsletter now, now you can send more content to them. Um, I mean, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would test first. Um, if that, if that's helpful. Thank you. Yep. Hey, you know, I think it's interesting from, from a standpoint of where do you put the registration wall? I mean, we've noticed at Reuters, um, our registered users are consuming approximately 50 times more content a month mm. than a non-registered user. Um, and, and, you know, that's a great thing, right? So you always have to look at, you know, what's impacting that. So I couldn't agree with you more, Pete, about newsletters. I mean, they're just a fantastic way to remind mm. your community that you're out there, <laughs> you know, because I think that's the biggest problem we have is grabbing attention because mm. there's so much information out there. Um, so sending that newsletter out and really, you know, putting a mission statement behind each newsletter, understanding what it is you want it to accomplish yeah. is really key. So, uh, Rebecca, that's kind of why I asked the question about what your registered people are doing vis-a-vis -vis two-year-old or more than two-year-old content. If they're viewing it, there might be a reason why. So dig into that and try to figure that out. And then you might be able to monetize whatever uh, aspect you find there. But um well, I mean, certainly this is, you know, it's kind of funny. The last two conversations with this organization for me have been really, really apropos. One about the open rates with Apple and then this one uh, with uh, with paid walls or registration walls or whatever. It's just, it's something I think everybody should be doing if they're not doing it currently. Yeah. That email list is the, is your money in the future, basically. Mm -hmm. And getting that newsletter is, is your voice, the direct voice. Um, yeah. This has been a great conversation. Um, we are approaching the two o'clock hour. Um, is there anybody who has a short last question? If not, we're going to wrap this up. Um, um, oop, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Joe posted one. Um, I think it was a follow up to the paywall jumping about that doesn't stop VPNs, does it? Um, I don't know if that was uh, the answer, but I just wanted to. It actually that. over restricts a VPN. That's sort of a little bit of the downside. So, uh, well, yeah, you could, if you're smart enough to, to come in from different IPs on, through a VPN, uh, yes, uh, you can, you can do it. You're, ne you're never going to get that person to pay. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's just, 
the way that is. So that's that's a highly technical user. Um, I, what I jumped to was like, let's say you let a, um, uh, an organization, um, let you're using, uh, you're blocking IP and then you want uh, uh, someone, someone from an organization is coming into your website and then someone different in the same organization off the same IP is coming into your website. Well, they get hard blocked because you're trying, you know, the, the whole organization is getting blocked. So there's a little bit of a, the other side of the sword on tracking IP addresses, uh, if that makes sense. Great. Yep. So I want to thank you, Pete. It was an amazing presentation. We've learned a ton. I personally am thrilled. Thank you. Took great notes. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here today. And um, there's so much coming up. We have an audience data strategies event in March. Um, we have some amazing content that'll be announced soon for April. It's a special panel that'll come out. And um, I'm going to ask you all to save the date for May 12th when we are gonna go live in person in uh, North Jersey, probably the Newark area. So please uh, keep your eye out for the emails. We're looking forward to seeing you all then. I wanna thank our sponsors again for today and all of our members. Guys, please, when you see the membership notes um, and emails, you can renew um, if you're not in the East Coast and it's not feasible. Uh, the digital memberships are $45. We encourage you to please join. This is the kind of content we continue to put out. The rest of the year looks amazing. Barb Falk and the programming committee are, are doing a great job. I want to thank Greg Wolf for introducing us to Pete and everybody else. Thank you so much. Have a great, great weekend. Jess, did I forget anything? I think you got it all covered. I don't even need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you again so much. And, and please email any of us. LinkedIn page, the um, the true company media audience and content marketing company LinkedIn page. Please join us, follow us so you can see what's going on. Okay. <laughs>